So mm -hmm. can you elaborate on the key components and stages involved in the AFT process uh, from input data to the final printed object? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, as um, as we talked about, the anti fusion technology is a complete solution, this end to end um, offering. And it really starts on, it has three or four main pillars. It depends on how you differentiate it, where it all starts on the material side. So um, the materials we are working with continuous fiber tape material. This is also not, we're not a, a material company or material compounders uh, company. We are working with uh, the, the big players in the industry that supply this. Um, there are usually international companies, uh, multi-billion dollar companies that have also like uh, established materials. So we go from commercial continuous fiber tape and we make this accessible to the technology. So first, and this is the second pillar, it goes into the software. On the software side, you need to have a good understanding of the material. So you need full material data cards, which we provide for our own purposes, but also to our customers uh, that have all the characteristics of this material built in. And this you can use then in the software, in the engineering software, which we call Fiberfy Design Suite to engineer the part. So you um, have tools to place continuous fiber tape materials, um, also neat or short fiber reinforced uh, polymers, and you can really build a hybrid, um, highly optimized, highly high, high performance part. And you interact with commercial FEA simulation environments like um, ANSYS, Nastron, Abacus, like those environments where you can really have different solvers on how to yeah, basically validate and then also optimize the part. So this is one. And then you go into, um, once you're ready there, you go into a second software solution, which we call Fiberfy Production. That's a workflow system or workflow um, cloud platform that connects to the engineering software, connects to the hardware. Um, so that's where you take the engineered file and you um, hand it over to the... Um, to the manufacturing or the hardware step, which is a two-step process. We have a additive manufacturing step, which we call build module. This is the, the, the system. Um, so it builds, it, it, it lays up the part or the material, like in the right amount, in the right areas. It executes what's engineered from the software. Um, you need to do this highly automated because it, it would be too tedious or too expensive for an engineer for a worker to place this material by far. I mean, you, you might need a week for a single part. So that's why the uh, the additive part, the 3D printing part is super relevant for the automation side. And then you have a second processing step, which is the fusion step. We call this a fusion module. That's the hardware unit. That's the electrically activated press where you have all the utilities built into it. So you have a rigid tool, this material preform. So coming from this build module goes into that mold and then it gets um, compacted by applying heat and pressure. And it, I usually talk about checkboxes. There are two rows of checkboxes. One is the, the row of quality. So uh, surface finish, reproducibility, uh, interlaminar bonding, void content. There's a long list of this, uh, which you really need for series production part to fulfill all the requirements. And the second row is functionalization, um, bringing multiple parts together, multiple materials together. So it really bakes and fuses different things together. And you can also reshape the part in in the Z direction or in out of plane dimension spatially, that is really like the key for most of the applications. The software is doing, um, it's telling where to lay the additive, the additive manufacturing part, the, the composites, but also mm -hmm. the software is telling the mold what shape it needs to take. What is the mold made from and how is the mold created? Is that also made out of a composite? No, it's not. It's it's usually, I think in English, it's called um, matched metal tooling. So it's really oh. like rigid tooling, metal, um, usually steel as well. It depends on a little bit on, on the application. We do a lot of high, really high temperature um, um, polymers. So th this also has special requirements and challenges. You asked earlier about challenges uh, for uh, tool design and tool manufacturing. So that's also part of what you need to engineer in the software. And then you have to produce it. Um, and this, the other elements are the engineering the parts so placing the fibers but at the same time also the processing what happens on the on the on the additive manufacturing side what happens on the the molding side so all these kind of things are processing related challenges or questions which you also have to have in the in the simulation in the in the software environment as well so it's it's pretty sophisticated so but you're the but the machines itself the machines mm -hmm. themselves are one is is putting the material with the additive manufacturing one is making the metal mold and then is there a not like is there are there how many machines are involved in this process i guess would be my question 
It's two machines, two processing steps. Um, they okay. can be automatically, uh, like they could be connected in an automated way. There could be also manual processing or transfer step involved. Um, and yeah, it's two machines, two steps. One is placing the material, the other one is molding it. Okay, and then the curing mm -hmm. happens where? The curing happens technically in both steps, right? Because once we we place this, uh, and we're talking about thermoplastics, so the, there's depends on who you ask if there's curing or not. I mean, you know, the terminology is not protected in a way, but there's no curing. The way I would explain it from my background on thermoplastics, so there's no curing step. Um, but you have this, you remelt the material on and, and place it, in the build module, in this additive manufacturing step. And in the molding step, you also remelt the material above melting point and mold it into the final shape. So basically you're rewriting the entire history, history thermal history of the material twice. Um, in, in That's this. what I was gonna ask, cause I'm, I'm curious, mm -hmm. Does how does that change the property of the material um, mm -hmm. when it's been melted, cooled, melted, cooled? And do you yeah. just consider the cooling part the curing part? Yeah, we 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 don't say curing. We say this is just like where it solidifies. Um, solidifies. It's, okay. It's in both in in both. Um, yeah, it's where it solidifies, and you can technically do this theoretically do this as many times as you want. Um, if you are not degrading the material, and you have to make sure that this is not happening. Yeah, but, I but, guess... but just want to emphasize that the fusion or this molding is super relevant because what I said when when you rewrite the thermal history that basically means everything be before that doesn't count anymore. It's not relevant. And in additive or 3D printing, you have always the problem that interlaminar bonding, huge, huge topic, right? Uh, porosity, uh, void content uh, between the different materials, whatever you, material you're placing, huge, huge problem, surface finish also. Like this is actually in our approach, not relevant because in the molding, you you rewrite all of that, the surface finish, interlaminar bonding, porosity. So for us, it's more about placing the material very efficiently in the right amount in the right direction or yeah and, mm -hmm. and it's not so much about interlump all those struggles which you have with pure play 3 printing we technically don't have because we do the, the final step the fusion step the molding step is rewriting that all right so cool. thank you so much for joining us martin and for sharing your aft expertise and thank you for joining us today until next time this is sharon spielman for machine design stay curious